All right. So lowering on down to your back. Just adjust the lights. I just want to make sure the lights are good in here. Beautiful. And on your back, let's just go ahead and come into a samasitihi there, which typically means just laying flat on the floor like you would for Shavasana. And take a few cycles of breath here. Asking the body to melt. And starting to enter into your ujjayi breathing. Letting the constriction of the back of the throat happen. Breathing in and out over the constriction of the throat muscles. Breathing with sound and let it be resonant. We're going to go ahead and take the arms up past the crown of the head and just stretch the entire body long. Try to push all 10 toes away from all 10 fingers. Go ahead and kind of banana our bodies, walking the feet and the arms over to the right. And if you'd like to, you can grab at the left wrist, maybe take the right ankle over the left. And just kind of relaxing in the shape for a moment, kind of like you were in bed, just reaching over to the right through the limbs. Not a supine twist, we're still on our backs. Just making a C shape with the body. Feeling the breath, relaxing the muscles. If you had crossed ankles and bound arms, you can release them. And let's walk everything on over to your left, the feet, the legs, the arms. Maybe grab the right wrist and cross the left foot over the right ankle. Just playing with this idea of a C shape of the whole body. If you hear beast noises, my dog is in the room now, and of course she's chosen this very moment to be upside down with us. What are you doing, Lola? You're crazy. Crazy dog. Again, just feeling the breath constricting through back of the throat. Maybe noticing one side of the body is a little tighter than the other. Or at least a little different. We'll slowly unravel feet and ankles and hands and wrists and come back to center, stretching upward through the fingertips once again, outward through the toes. Let's open the hands wide, stretch the fingertips apart from each other, jazz hands, and then fully flex the feet, bring the toes back toward the head. And take a big inhale, stretch a little more. And exhale, we're going to take the arms forward toward the toes and curl our way up to a seat. Awesome. It's a little bit of a sit-up, just one. Okay? And take a big inhale. Let's lift the arms to the sky, upright in your seat. And exhale, fold forward into the legs. So I don't know if you've been here at all today. I really haven't. I've been working at my computer all day. So this is such an interesting shape to be in because it almost perpetuates that curvature that happens in the upper back when you round over your computers. So even though we might have been sitting all day, 
Let's go ahead and let the head drape just for a few cycles of breath. Seeing if you can relax into the back body. Maybe sinking a little deeper into this Pishimottanasana, this nice forward fold. Take the next inhale to look up and exhale. And we'll sit up, inhale, let's bring the, sh the shin bones together, cross them. We'll take the hands to the floor in front of your sit bones and let's just do one little sneaky lift up, one sneaky core thing. We did this last night in the power up class. Toes to the floor, let's rock into the hands. We'll lift the body up for five, good. Four, walk your hands a little further forward so that you can shift your butt back behind them. Three, good, get better. Two, and one, lower down. Let's walk the hands forward past your feet and we'll step back one leg at a time to your plank. So we just did a little bit of relaxing and now we'll do just a little bit of engagement. So trying to squeeze the thighs in toward each other. Feel the heels reaching back toward the back edge of your mat. And take an inhale, lean forward, look forward, and exhale, lower down on five. Keep it slow, feel free to drop the knees. Four, three, two, and one. Let's find our way down, and we'll land into sphinx. So elbows on the floor, and just take a moment to notice this shape. How does it feel now to be in the counter stretch of that Pashimottanasana, that forward fold that we just did? And this counter is by lifting into your upper back, pressing the chest forward and up. Maybe even engaging the legs if you want a little bit more power instead of letting the feet and the legs just kind of drip to the floor. Point through those toes, activate the quads, and pull the rib cage up and forward. Take a big inhale, stretch a little more into the front body here. And exhale, let's release. Hands under shoulders, come on up to table on your inhale, and we'll take a quick child's pose on your exhale. So in this child's pose, let's tent the fingers, ask the shoulders to roll down and away from the ears. Breathing fully into the upper back, the space between the shoulder blades. And perhaps even pushing the fingertips into the floor. And last inhale. Exhale. Hands to the floor, come on up to table pose. Knees underneath your hips, palms under shoulders, and let's circle through some cat and cow. Inhale, tail and chin up. Exhale, use your core to round into your back. And again, inhale, tail and chin higher. Exhale, curl inward a little bit deeper. Use that core, squeeze it in. And again, inhale, open across the heart as you lift the tail. Exhale, open into the shoulder blades as you look toward your belly button. And again, inhale, scoop the belly in as you lift. Exhale, scoop the belly in as you round. And let's just take one more together. Inhale. And exhale, really round into your upper back. Let's flip over your toes and we'll hover the knees away from the floor. Just a brief, sneaky bit of power for five, just the knees hovering. Four, three, try to find your low abs here. Two, let's find downward dog on one. Lift the hips all the way up. Go ahead and paddle it out. One heel at a time. Notice how your body feels in this first inverted V shape. Breathing deeply. 
sighing slowly. Letting the head relax. Letting the core engage. And from your downward facing dog, let's look forward and we'll walk up to the top of your mat. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, the arms by your side. So we'll go into some slow Surya Namaskars together. Inhale, lift the arms back up. Exhale, dive in, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway forward. Exhale, fold. We're gonna step back with your left leg. So just slow left leg back. Find a low lunge. You can walk the hands to the inside edge of your front foot if you'd like. And dip the hips down just to open into the front of your left hip. Take a big inhale, lift the chest up. And exhale, we'll step back to your plank. Inhale, lean forward, and exhale everything back to the floor. Come on back to your Sphinx Pose. Inhale, chin up. Exhale, chin and chest to the right. Inhale, half circle to center. Exhale to the left. Inhale again, half circle up. Exhale to the right. You can tell I really love this one, right? I do it a lot. Inhale, lift it back up. Exhale to the left. Come on back to the center, take a big inhale, open across the heart space. Exhale, release down, hands under shoulders, come back up to table on inhale. Child's pose, exhale, we're gonna immediately tent the fingers and child, walk the hands over to the right. And it might be really awesome for you just to stay here. Some of my students like to take the right arm and reach it way back behind them. I'm gonna let you choose if that feels like a good idea for you. Just slowing down the breath. Maybe pushing the left sit bone down into the ground and feeling the stretch all the way from lifted fingertips through the tailbone. Noticing where you do in fact feel the stretch and where you don't. Just see if you can bring the hips over to your left a little bit more. Go back to center with the tented fingers. Inhale. Exhale, walk the hands over to your left. Letting the right sit bone ground. Maybe walking your left hand away toward the back edge of your mat. Softening breath as we breathe into the right rib cage. Maybe you feel the stretch all the way through the right side of the body, all the way toward the tailbone. Noticing once again where you feel it. Maybe pushing the sit bones more over to the right. And we'll take an inhale to walk the hands both all the way back to center. Exhale, release down to the ground a little deeper. Come back up to your table on your inhale. And exhale, flip over the toes, hovering table. Here we go for five. Just the knees a couple inches away from the floor. Four, find your low belly, scoop it up. Three, two, control on one, all the way to your downward dog. Great job. Paddle it out. Notice how the body feels. Once again, with the head below the hips. Just letting the blood rush in. Maybe we've been sitting upright all day. I know I have. Staring at a computer screen. This is a nice opportunity to just get the brain back into the state of calm, out of the state of static fuzz, out of the state of the blue light from that computer. And we'll pick up the heels on your inhale. 
Exhale, look forward. Step, if you want to jump up, I won't watch, but step, make your way to the top of your mat. Lift halfway, inhale. Exhale, fold. Let's come back up to stand. Inhale, come all the way up. Maybe a little back one at the top. And then exhale, the arms by your sides. Let's do the other leg. Inhale, sleep it back up. Exhale, fold into the legs. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, fold. We'll step back with the right leg this time. A little low lunge. Maybe walk the hands to the inside edge of the front foot. Steady into the hip opening of the right leg. Good. Maybe dip the hips down a little bit and pick up the chest. Notice one hip is tighter than the other. And asking the glutes to do a little engaging so the front of the hip can actually soften. Good. Take a big inhale. And exhale, step on back to your plank. Inhale, lean forward. And exhale, everything back to the floor, nice and slow. Just a little cobra flow for us on this moon day. Fingertips to the outside edges of your mat. Engage your legs. Inhale, use your upper back. I promise this will strengthen. Lift up. Exhale, squeeze the back muscles to lower down. And again, inhale, squeeze the back to lift. Exhale, squeeze back body to lower. We're going to do a three more. Inhale, squeeze it up. Exhale, squeeze it down. Inhale, squeeze it up. Exhale, squeeze it down. Try to bring the shoulder blades a little closer together. Inhale, come up. Exhale, release down. Hands under shoulders. Come back to table. Breath in. Child's pose. Breath out. So let's walk the hands close together, straight past the, uh, the crown of the head, arms long. Maybe one hand on the other. Pushing the hands down into the floor. Ask the shoulders to find a little bit more space. Good. Please switch which hand is on top. Walk the hands back under the shoulders. Come on up to table pose. Inhale. Flip over the toes. Hovering table. Here we go for five. Scoop the low belly in. Find Mula Bandha. Four. Pelvic floor engagement. Just like my teachers say, squeeze your anus. Three. Just try to find it. Two. And one. Downward facing dog. So let's take the right leg to the sky on your inhale. We'll exhale, open the hip and bend the knee. You can turn the gaze to the right, getting a little deeper into the side body stretch. Let's kick that leg straight up behind, inhale. Back into your downward dog, exhale. Let's do the left leg, inhale, pick it up. Exhale, open it up, gaze to the left. Try to slow down the breath as you roll open. And we'll inhale, kick that leg straight up above. Come back to down dog, exhale. Listen, we're gonna take the right leg back to the sky, inhale. And exhale, we'll step the foot forward. Once again, into a low lunge, we'll take the hands to the inside edge of your front foot. So we're gonna actually do cat and cow. So I'm gonna offer maybe turning the front toes out a little bit, maybe to two o'clock-ish. But we're gonna do cat and cow right here. So just being cautious of your knees and your hips and everything else. 
Do what you can with it, but dip the hips toward the floor to inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, round into your upper back, lift the hips a little. And again, inhale, dip the hips and look up. Exhale, round into the back. We'll take three more. Inhale, dip and lift. Exhale, round, look down. Two more times. Inhale, dip and lift. Exhale, round in. Once more, inhale, and exhale. Coming back into your low lunge, return your front toes forward. We'll drop your back knee and settle into a half split. So always feel free to have your hands on blocks. And from here, the half split, we're gonna actually walk the hands over to the right. So on the outside edge of your right foot. And you could take the blocks with you um, if you needed the ground a little closer. And just noticing where the stretch happens. And maybe engaging the right leg a little bit more as you push into the left knee. Inhale, bring the hands back to center, re-bend the front knee, and exhale, we'll pick up the back knee. Listen, we're gonna walk the hands over to your left and parallel the feet, wide leg forward fold. So we want this to be relatively restorative. And just seeing if we can push the hands into the floor, feeding the head a little closer through toward the earth. Don't need to push too hard, nor too much. But instead, just let the body dangle as you lean into the fronts of the feet. Over time, the back body will stretch a little bit more, I promise. Inhale, lift the head halfway up, and exhale. We're gonna walk the hands back to the right, turn the front toes forward, and we'll step back to your plank. Good. Let's take an inhale to lean forward. Exhale, lower down halfway or all the way. Finding a deeper back bend, whatever that means for you, maybe through up dog, maybe cobra, whatever you'd like. When you're ready for downward dog, picking it on up, lifting the hips. So slower flow doesn't necessarily mean easier. It just means a little slower. And the more you engage the body, the more challenging you might find this practice. So let's take the left leg to the sky. Inhale, exhale, we'll open the hip, bend the knee once again. And just breathing, feeling the left side body expanding, noticing what needs to happen for the body to relax here. Maybe playing with rolling the chest open to the left. And we'll kick that leg straight up behind you, inhale. Come back to down dog, exhale, and let's move through the right leg. Inhale the right leg up. Same thing, open it up, bend the knee once again. Just a few cycles of breath. Pushing the ground away. Maybe bring the chest a little closer to the standing leg. Inhale, kick that leg straight up behind. Down dog, exhale, left leg one more time. Inhale the left leg up. Exhale, open the hip, bend the knee. Just notice how it feels for three, two. Last inhale on one. And exhale, let's straighten the leg above us. Inhale, point the toes. 
exhale, settle the foot forward. We're coming back into that low lunge, okay? So we have your um, hands on the inside edge of your front foot. Find your lunge first, and then we'll turn the front toes open to about 10 o'clock-ish. This kind of depends on your knee joint and how you feel, because we're gonna do those cat and cow rounds, okay? So here we go. Going ahead and slowly dipping the hips down, I'll lift the chin, take an inhale. Exhale, round into the back. And again, inhale, dip the hips, lift the heart. Exhale, round inward. And again, inhale, dip it and lift it. Exhale, round it. Two more. Inhale, slow, luxurious, get into the front of the right hip. Exhale, round, use your core, try to squeeze in. One more time. Inhale, dip it and lift it. And exhale, round it. Going back to center, turn your front toes forward. We'll drop that back knee and settle into your half Hanumanasana, half split. Front toes flexing back toward the face. Lifting through the chest, good. And we'll walk the hands over to your left. Just slowing down breath here as you twist open a little bit. Letting that outer right hip receive a stretch. And you might find that you're stretching other parts of your bodies too, depending upon how tight or loose you are on the hamstrings or on the rib cage or anywhere else. But just take notice of where you're feeling it the most. And then see if you can relax into that strain. We don't want any strain or stress. Instead, we want to try to decompress. So where is this tension happening? And how can we relax? So that way we can override that tension. Beautiful. Let's walk the hands back to center. Inhale and exhale. We'll bend into the front knee. Walk the hands over to the right. We're going to go back to wide leg forward fold. So picking up both legs and we'll parallel the feet in toward each other, but we're going to stand up. So like the, take the hands out up to the waist. Inhale, come on up and exhale. Let's open the arms wide and we're going to be right here in the starfish shape to breathe for five. Try to engage the legs, lift the chest. Four, pretend like you have a huge ball, a beach ball up into your collarbones, lift it up a little taller. Three, two, last inhale on one, really lift through the center of the heart. Exhale, let's bind the hands behind your low back. So before we do anything with the bind, let's lift the chest up, tucking the tailbone under. Let's take a big inhale and exhale, let's fold in. Relax into your forward fold, relax into your shoulders, relax into your neck. Relax into your breath. If this is too cumbersome for the shoulders, wrists, or elbows, just release the grip and maybe grab elbows today. But do try to lift the arms off the body. Do try to stretch across the heart. Do try to engage the legs and engage the core.
And we'll inhale from here, lift the head halfway up. And exhale, let's release the hands to the floor. So we're gonna take a little twist. We're gonna bring the right hand underneath your face. Left hand to the hip. Take an inhale, express the chest forward. Exhale, twist to your left. Maybe take your left arm up to the sky. Let's breathe for five, four. You can always walk your feet a little closer or further away, depending upon what you need. Three, two, last inhale on one. Exhale, let's switch hands. You can always have your hand on a block, right hand to the hip. Inhale, send your gaze forward. Exhale, twist open to the right. Lift it on up for five, four, three, two. Last inhale on one. Then exhale, release. We're going to walk the hands over to your left foot. Turn your left toes directly forward and we'll step back once again to your plank. So let's just hold plank for 10 rounds of breath. Nice and easy, nothing crazy. Drop your knees if you need it. Here we go for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's drop the knees. We're going to go to puppy pose. You can do child's pose or maybe hands on blocks or elbows on blocks if that's a better option for you to be in. Maybe grabbing the front edge of your mat with your hands. Just working a slow and gentle descent of the chest, the chin toward the ground. Relaxing into your upper back. And listening to the breath, maybe with the eyes closed. Always feel free to come out whenever you need to. Maybe move to child's pose or cat and cow if you come out early.
And then we're gonna start to push the ground away if you, have, if you haven't already. It's nice and slowly coming on up to your table. A few cycles of cat and cow, just inhale, curling it up. Exhale to round, this is a nice counter stretch. And again, inhale slowly. Exhale to counter it. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Back in the table, hovering table, just holding the knees away from the floor for five. Four, three, two, awesome. One downward facing dog. Woo, hovering table, love that one. So let's get into a flip dog and we're gonna head to a pigeon pose. Let's take the right leg up, inhale, and let's flip it on over. Just breathing easy, breathing deep for five. Four, three, two, and on one with care, come around, inhale, sweep that leg up strong. So you could go to a lizard if you prefer that one, or if you want to take your pigeon, settle the knee forward. Maybe sit on a block, sit on a pillow, sit on things that you might need, but try to drag your left hip forward. And just take a nice inhale to lift the heart. And exhale, lower yourselves down. So use this opportunity to relax. Maybe with a little soft engagement to the back leg, just to make sure you're not pushing too much weight into the patella or your kneecap. Maybe a soft engagement in the core to make sure that you're not overarching your low back, or at least you're supportive of the process. And perhaps some soft engagement in the epiglottis, back of the throat, as you breathe in and out with sound. want to add on, you can take your left shoulder to the floor for a little twist. Maybe take the right arm around your low back. If you're feeling super flexy today, you might bend your back knee, grab your foot in this shape. feeling particularly super flexy today. I'm feeling pretty tight. But wherever you're at, just notice. And make a little wiggle, make some adjustments so that way wherever you're at feels sustainable for at least the next full minute. Slowing down the breath.
wherever you're at, let's just slowly start to unravel, coming out the same way you entered. And breathing in at the top to lift through the chest once you sat up. And as you exhale, let's return the hands to the floor. Step on back to your three-legged dog with that right leg up nice and tall. And just nice and firm with that leg as you push up through the lifted heel. Notice how the glute feels like it's regaining some strength, some stability. And take an inhale, really lift through the glute. And exhale, let's drop that right foot to the floor. Let's flip the, the dog with the left leg. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, let's flip it on over. Pick up the hips to breathe for five, four, three, two, And one, slow to come around. Nice inhale to lift the leg and making your way to pigeon or lizard on this side. A few cycles of breath as you try to drag the right hip forward. And again, some caution with your back knee as always, okay? And take a big inhale, set up. And exhale to bow in. Maybe just simply noticing the difference between sides right here, right now, before going any deeper. Maybe taking the right shoulder to the floor to twist to your left. Maybe the left arm around your back. Letting the dust settle. Perhaps the add-on, whatever that is for you. We'll start to unravel once again, same way you entered. And just take a 
big inhale at the very top and exhale we'll find our way back into your three-legged dog kicking that leg up straight behind you pushing out through the lifted foot breathing some life back into the left glute finding your power and your strength once again and take a big inhale really lift it up and exhale downward dog let's turn the gauge forward and step or jump all the way through to your seat good my matches came with me awesome so we're just going to take a five count all the way down to the floor if you have a block you can bring one between your thighs or not that's totally fine just a five count i am going to pulse because i want to work a little bit more on my core today so feel free to join me Otherwise, just a very slow and gentle squeeze of the block, lower down, okay? Take an inhale, exhale for five, squeeze the block. If you're doing it with me, you can come back up. Four, come back up. Three, come back up. Two, come back up one come back up and relax all the way down good so if you do have that block you can bring it underneath your sacrum making your way into a little supported bridge pose today if you don't have a block i'll recommend a pillow or a couple of tall books it's okay if you don't have one it's not a problem i'm just going to do a couple more things here so just a brief supported bridge pose and then we're just going to do uh, i'm going to offer a few things first thing i'll offer is the soles of feet together and the knees apart here now this might feel pretty intense for the inner thigh. So if that's intense for you, you can remove the block and just come to the floor, do Supta Baddha Konasana as normal, totally fine. The other thing I'll offer is walking the feet out and just knocking the knees in toward each other and just using this um, supported restorative bridge pose as a way to calm down. Okay. So I wanna leave it up to you, whatever feels good. Maybe play with both of them just to see how they feel. Maybe you notice you're resting more on one side of your sacrum than the other. And maybe even rocking from right to left on your sacrum just to see if there's a little imbalance there. And then from here, wherever your legs are, let's feed the knees back together. Make sure your block or your pillow is very comfortably placed underneath your sacrum. And we're gonna kick the legs up for a Viparita Karani, which is technically the legs up the wall, but it's definitely one of the best postures we can do for ourselves. And just elevating the feet above the heart. This is such a great inversion to do at the end of the day when you're tired. For me, it has this neutralizing effect of bringing back in kind of a more central sense of neutrality where I'm not so tired anymore. And I've been in classes where we've had the feet up the wall or our sacrum on a block for up to 20 minutes. I won't do that to you today, but just know it's available for you. You can always rest in your bed with your legs up the wall or up the headboard. 
You can rest on your couch with your legs lifted up and over the headrest area. You can rest on the floor with your legs up on the couch and just your knees bent. It's a really nice way to just once again bring a little more rest restoration back in. And from a biological perspective, it's also really useful to kind of counteract the lactic acid buildup that occurs in the body through vigorous exercise. So if you're a vigorous exerciser, your physical sense is heightened, and we oftentimes accumulate such things in the, in the tissues and the muscles. And this right here is a really great way to just let all that dissolve. choose to stay like this for your rest or you can bend your knees bring your feet to the floor any sort of rest is perfectly great today maybe take a little supine twist if you're doing that remove your block of course but just let yourselves get into a place where rest is possible because the body feels at peace If you opted for supine twist, just switching whenever you're ready. Just finding your way into the most restful, comfortable position possible if you're not there already.
And we'll begin to come back. Just breathing in and out and feel the body responding. Moving gently at first. And then increasing the range of motion once again, stretching more fully through the fingers and the toes. And gliding the knees to the chest. Landing over onto the right. And rising all the way up to your seat. Just sitting in stillness. Letting the head drop inward for a gentle bow as we honor this practice honor this time, honor our spaces, and honoring our breath. And we'll close today with the sound of Om. Inhale. so very much for being here today. Namaste. Thanks everybody for being here. Great to have you as always.